No, I mean, I think you can always uh, look at the comments that come out after these meetings as you know, position taking rather than necessarily an accurate commentary on what's going on there. Uh, it is, I think, pretty uh, certain that uh, neither side expect much movement until September. Uh, they're not really going to do a great deal, I suspect, in, in August. Uh, I still think, although you know we heard talk from Barnier yesterday about a deal being perhaps unlikely and some pessimism from Frost, that a deal is probably still more likely than not, simply because it's in neither side's interest to come away from this negotiation without anything. Tim, I'm, I'm going to just go there because I know it's unpopular to say so, but fishing is stunningly emotive in the United Kingdom. It's the one that keeps coming up all the time. Uh, I'm very proud of our heritage, roots as an island, blah, blah, blah. But the point of the matter is, it's 0.1% of the British economy. Beyond the emotive side, why are we getting so hung up on such a small part of the British economy when most of our catch goes to the continent anyway? So we need the customer. Well, I think that's absolutely true. I mean, clearly there are far more important sectors economically in this uh, negotiation than fishing. I think the problem is, as you say, it's emotive, it's symbolic, it's all about uh, the slogan that won the referendum, if you like, take back control. It's one aspect of that. And certainly in some communities, it, it plays very well. And I, and I think you know, for the government, uh, that is important because it's not only obviously got an eye on the negotiations themselves, but also on the electoral implications of anything it does. And actually, it's also important for Scotland as well. Uh, Scotland uh, has a, if you like, a, a disproportionate share of fishing. So it's quite important that England isn't seen to, if you like, sell out Scotland on this issue.